All right. So, Matt, I asked Ashley the other day, I said, do you know why Snoop Dogg carries an umbrella? And she said, faux drizzle. <laughs> and I said, no, come on. Come on. It's in case there's a Lil Wayne. I knew the faux drizzle thing. <laughs> I knew that. I, I didn't know the other. <laughs> That's great. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the graveyard. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Adam. And my name's Matt. Now, pull up a tombstone or settle into your casket and get comfortable because this is Graveyard Tales. (laughs) All right, everybody, here we are again. Matt, how you doing tonight, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing all right. Good deal. Good deal. So before we get into it, say, go check out the Podbelly Network at podbelly.com. You can find a list of shows that we're happy to be associated with, and you can find some tips and tricks on podcasting if you're into that. We also want to thank tonight's sponsor, Fume, and we will talk more about them in the episode. Now, while you're on the internet doing your internet thing, um, you know, buying Matt and I some gifts or <laughs> some, but. On a serious note, if you want to do something for us for uh, the holidays and you're like, you know, Matt and Adam deserve something, what you can do is use our sponsor codes. That is the best gift that you could give Matt and I is use our sponsor codes for anything, any of our sponsors, because when you use that, then they go, oh, hey, there's traction and they will sponsor another episode of Graveyard Tales which means that keeps us going between the sponsors and our patrons. That's how Matt and I are able to keep doing the show. So if you're like, I don't want to use one of those codes, I don't need anything, but I still want to do something. Then go over to patreon.com slash graveyard tales, sign up to become a patron. You can be one, five or $10 patron. We have different bonuses for each level, but Our $10 a month, they get the video version of us recording the episode. They get the video version of the bonus episode, plus the audio version of the bonus episode, plus an ad-free audio version that you can stream to your favorite podcatcher. So all of those bonus episodes can go to your favorite podcatcher. You don't have to listen to them just on the Patreon website. You just copy the RSS feed into your podcatcher. All of the bonus episodes show up where you listen to Graveyard Tales. That's right. That's right. And, you know, the it's I mean, it's Christmas time. You Everybody is is doing their shopping and everybody has that person. Uh, what am I? I don't know what to get them or, you know, I've got to I've got to come up with something unique. Um, hey, look, you can you get them a patreon a subscription Mm -hmm. if if they're a graveyard tells listener hey that makes a great gift okay um or look at some of our sponsors like adam said i mean we have got some incredible gifts uh from the companies that sponsor graveyard tales Mm -hmm. so check them out i mean you you might be surprised you could save a little bit of money you're supporting the show and you can get a great gift i mean that's everybody wins and how can you go wrong right exactly so matt that's all we got for housekeeping so why don't you tell us what are we talking about tonight brother uh you're after me lucky charms I, you know, I was wondering who was going to be the first, you or me. Who was going to be the first? I've been practicing all day. Um, <laughs> it's not yeah, bad, so, by It's not too bad, by it. So tonight we're going to talk about serial killers. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Get it, Lucky Charm cereal? That's, that's we're going gonna, we're gonna to talk about leprechauns. And some of you may be going, uh, is this an old show from March? No. <laughs> No, that's when everybody would expect it, and right. we're we're never going to do the thing that anyone expects. We're gonna we're gonna talk about leprechauns because, just like with Lucky Charms, like with Notre Dame, uh, the Boston Celtics, this is what 
artists have developed the leprechaun to be. Mm-hmm. That's not really what the 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 mythos of leprechauns. That's not really what they look like or right. how they behave. So there's some there's some notable differences. Um, and believe it or not. There are actual sightings yeah. of what has been attributed to leprechauns, and we're going to dig into all that. This is going to be fun. This is like uh, this is like back in the early days when yeah. we did episodes about just vampires. Yeah. Okay. We're just, we're just, we're going to talk about werewolves. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're, tonight we're just going to talk about leprechauns, and and it's gonna be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Sadly, we didn't find any leprechaun belts for That's this right. episode. But. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make my own. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, as we always say, go check our sources down at the bottom of the show notes. You can find where we found all the information and keep going because um, there is a lot of folklore on the leprechauns. And I'm not going to be able to cover all of it. I'm going to try to hit the highlights and give you a, a good rundown of it. But there's always more to be had. So go over there, check our sources, bottom of the show notes. Now, what is a leprechaun? Well, like Matt was saying, it's the weird dude on the Lucky Charms box. Or (laughs) a leprechaun is a mythical creature from Irish folklore. Now, the leprechaun story has been a beloved aspect of Irish lore for a long time. And it's believed to be a part of another piece of famous folklore because they are traditionally known to be members of the fairy family or the fae. Right. And we, we did a whole episode on the fae. And there's other fae that we're probably going to have to touch on more in depth too, Matt. Some of the other types of fae we're going to have to get into. I think, I think so, because we, we talked about a lot mm-hmm. of, of different type of fae. And we, we mentioned leprechauns, but we just kind of... It was in passing. We yep. never really gave it its due, much like some of the other ones. So, you know, yep. tonight will be the time for us to do that. And expect some other Fay to come up a- as we go, because we'll have to intersperse some other fairy family members in there <laughs> just to give mm-hmm. them their 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 due, like Matt said. Well, tales of these small creatures, they first emerged in about the 8th century when legends about tiny water dwellers began circulating among the Celts. So you're talking the 700s. So 700 AD, but, uh, or CE. Now I always, I always say AD. Everybody now says CE. It's the same thing. Y'all know what I mean. Now where Matt, where do these little fellers live? Well, In order to hide from humans, which that's what they do, they're known to dwell in tiny underground caves or hollow tree trunks. So they kind of remind me of the Keebler elves. Yeah, a little bit. Because they hide in hollow tree trunks just like the Keebler elves do. But that's a whole nother fay. I mean, we might have to do a whole episode on the Keebler elves. And their cookies aren't near as good. Right. I'm just telling you. Right, right. Now, the leprechauns, they're famous for being the cobblers of the fairy world. And their name is also associated with the old term uh, Leth Brogan, meaning shoemaker, which there's other interpretations of where leprechaun comes from that I'll get into shortly. But um, this is the profession, they say, that earns them their iconic pots of gold. So being the, the cobblers for the fey realm. But again, as with all old legends, there's a couple origin stories yeah. for them. So I'm going to try to briefly touch on both of those. So that's one. But they're also said to be very secretive and elusive, and they often lead people on wild goose chases in search of treasure. And it says, if you happen to catch a leprechaun, he'll give you three wishes, provide you let him go, or he possesses a hidden crock of gold, and if captured and threatened with bodily violence, he might, if his captors keep an eye on him, reveal its hiding place. But they say usually the captor is tricked into glancing away, and the leprechaun vanishes. 
So he does so, that. Hey, look, a squirrel. And you go, <laughs> what? And then he yes. disappears. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to grab this little guy, you know, squeeze him, grab his collar. Mm-hmm. Give it up, leprechaun. Yeah. You know, I, I'll <laughs> pop you like a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> Give me that gold. I mean, they're like, look at that guy beating up that child. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. he's got the gold. You yeah. know? <laughs> Is that Homer Simpson? Choking, <laughs> choking Bart. <laughs> now, like I said, they're usually classed as some kind of fairy. Leprechauns, they, they're small supernatural creatures that are specific. They're, it's specific to Irish folklore. So a lot of these other fae you see in multiple different groups folklore, mm-hmm. but leprechaun in general is specific to Irish folklore. Now, because they're strongly associated with gold and wealth, they're kind of meant to be a test for humans' greed. So in the modern world, though, the leprechaun has become an enduring symbol of Ireland. Mm-hmm. So it's, which I'll also talk about the uh, the evolution of it, but it's interesting when we look at what, and this happens a lot, Matt. We look at what the origins of something are, mm-hmm. and then right. we look at what they're portrayed as today, and today they're all cutesy and like, I mean, the unicorn. We looked at the unicorn. Right, yeah. It was not a cutesy, glitter-farting thing back in the day. But now that's what it is. Leprechauns, now they, you know, yeah, lay off me lucky charms and stuff. And <laughs> Well, yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know, unicorns, you know, farting rainbows and all that stuff. Yeah, they, and, you know, uh, as an aside, I, I am convinced, you know, unicorns existed, y'all. Mm-hmm. They didn't. We talked about this once before when we talked, when he did a show about them. They look. They were around. They didn't look like what you think they look like. But right. there, there was a creature that was a unicorn. Yep. Um, which you know, and I just always kind of think, why not the rest of these things? Yeah, I. You know, Matt. We talked about this when we did the Fey episode. I'm a firm believer in the Fey realm. Yeah. What it is, what types of creatures? It are there multiple creatures? Is it one? It's a trickster that becomes a leprechaun, that becomes a, a this, becomes a that. I don't know. But I'm a firm believer that there is a fey realm with these types of entities on the other side. And they interact with us. There's just so much mm-hmm. that, 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 that lingers around and points in that direction. You know, that right. it just, when it seems like nature is trying to outsmart you, yeah, then you got to think. Okay, this 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 could be Fay, mm-hmm. and you know it's it's not nature outsmarting me. It's the the protectors of nature that are outsmarting me. Right, exactly, and that that's why I I think it could be the case. Is we see a lot where nature seems to you know nature in quotes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. seems to retaliate or seems to get you back or whatever. Maybe it's the fey realm. It's not nature in and of it. It's not the tree, right? Yeah. But it's whatever is designated to protect the tree. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like the Lorax. Or something. Exactly that. I was trying to think of that name, and I was going to brush it off until I could come up with the Lorax. But <laughs> you did it first. So this is twice you've beat me this episode, and I'm not happy, Matt. I'm That's not right. happy. If I <laughs> if I get three, it's a hat trick. <laughs> your your trigger finger's quicker than mine today, and I'm not I'm not appreciating that. <laughs> now the English word leprechaun is derived from the Middle Irish uh, lucrapon or lucracon, it, it, one of those two. And the most common meaning given for the name is a compound of the root words lu or lagu. And corp. So lu or lagu is from the Greek word meaning small, and corp is the Latin corpus, which means body. So technically, small body. Mm-hmm. You know, now we just heard a minute ago that the name meant something different, but I tend to fall on this mixture of the Greek and the Latin. It makes more sense to me. Um, we saw uh, earlier where 
It was Lef Brogan, which meant shoemaker. I, I honestly think that could be the case, but I think it came later. I think the original, and this is just my opinion. I have no evidence of this, but I think the original was the, um, the, the two words for small and body. Yeah, it makes sense. Now, there's another Irish tale about the origins of leprechauns. Now, the Celtic god Lu, L-U-G-H, probably pronouncing that wrong because I that that's a hard language to pronounce over there. When you get into some of the dialects oh, yeah. of Ireland and stuff, can't do it. So I'm going to do my best Texas Ireland accent here. Yeah. I mean, if you've ever looked at the spelling of Siobhan. Yeah. Um, and, and been like, oh, hi, Sibohan, you know, yeah. and, and then you go, oh, no, no, this is pronounced Siobhan. You're just like, how? Yeah. You know? Well, just, <laughs> just the old Celtic for she, the type of fairy, which I'm going to mention in a minute, is S-I-D-H-E. So mm. you would think Sidi, but it, yeah. everything you look up, it's pronounced she. So... Uh, and we say, you know, it's like like Sawain and and all those were it, it it they don't look like that, but it's it's that's part of the language and and truthfully, I think that's that's a deep rooted part of the culture is that oh, yeah. the way that language works. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it's I mean, I I, I, fo- an- I follow I follow this girl on TikTok. Yeah, I'm I'm giving it up. Here we go. Matt Matt's on TikTok. I I I'm, I love it. <laughs> I think it's great. But I follow this girl that's in Ireland, and she had a video the other day where I guess people had commented and said, uh, your accent is too heavy. She's like, I'm not changing my accent for anybody. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm like, yeah, because that's what makes you you, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I think that's just a sense of pride, yeah. you know, for, for Irish folks. Well, and I mean, it would be the same if you told me my accent was too much, like, we had a comment about somebody on YouTube goes, why, why do you talk like that? Uh, cause of where I was born, <laughs> you know, and, and it's the same for people born in Ireland. A lot of them do have a thick accent. I think it's cool. I think in my opinion, I love different accents. Now I oh, have yeah. a hard time yeah. understanding some of them cause my, my dumb Southern American ear does not work well, but you know, I, I love the fact that we have these different accents and you look at England or look at the, the UK over there. Yeah. It's small, but you go from the bottom of the UK all the way to the top and look at the different accents that you have all the way through that, you know, from the bottom of the UK up to Ireland and all that. It's just so many different accents in a small area. I mean, the U S is very similar. True. You know, and that and that's just the the you know, the accents from around the the different regions. You know, when you start tacking on all the other cultures that have moved here. Mm-hmm. You know, then I mean, listen, it, I, until you have um un, until you have met a uh, an Asian person who talks like they're from Tennessee, you haven't lived it is oh, the that, greatest. It is the greatest thing ever. There's the a comedian, comedian Henry yeah. Cho. <laughs> yes, yep. I love I him. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> he was born in Knoxville. Yeah, you know, looks looks as Korean as the day is long, mm-hmm. and then he's like, "Hey, y'all." And, <laughs> yeah, well, and he jokes about that too. He makes jokes about how his dad has a really thick Korean accent, but he sounds like a redneck. And he goes, "You should have." You should have seen me in college. Everybody expected my dad's <laughs> accent and they got me. Hey, you know, <laughs> I love it. So anyway, off that tangent, y'all are used to Graveyard Tales tangents, aren't you? By now. You should be. Should be. So the Celt- if this is your first episode, sorry for the tangents, but you'll get used to them. Now, the Celtic god Lou may have eventually transformed from his powerful stature to a form popularly called Lou Cromaine meaning stooping Lou. The god was supposed to have disappeared into the underground world of the Celtic Shi. Now, the diminutive form of the once powerful king may have evolved into the leprechaun that we know today. 
the fairy creature that is half craftsman and half mischievous spirit, which is what we know of the leprechaun. Um, and since all the original mythological creatures were delegated to the underworld with the advent of Christianity, it explains the transformation of the God. So I, I think that I like that. I like yeah. that explanation for it. Now, if you're from Ireland and you go, dude, where'd you get your information? Please let me know. But this is what I was able to find. So yeah. now, while the modern perception of the leprechaun is this mischievous looking little being that's dressed in a green suit and a top hat, the fairy legends have very different portrayal of him. Now, leprechauns traditionally took the form of an old man with a white or red beard. They were no larger than a child. They wore hats and were usually depicted sitting on toadstools. They had old wrinkled faces. So you've got to think of this really old, little old man with a big red or white beard and a hat sitting on a toadstool. Why can't I say toadstool tonight? Anyway, How often do you say that? <laughs> not often. I think the three or four times I've said it now is the most I've said it in six months. Now, there is a more modern interpretation of the leprechaun, which is a creature whose jolly round face rivals the bright green of his clothing. And the modern leprechaun is usually smooth shaven or has a red beard to contrast his green clothing, which that's what we here in America picture as a leprechaun. When we think right. leprechaun, we think of bright green clothing with a top hat, buckles, and a bright red beard or no beard. And yeah. he's And of course the red beard, you know, is is an, is an Irish thing as well, so mm -hmm. Yep. Now, in Irish mythology, fairies were usually depicted wearing a red or green coat. The older variations of the leprechaun would usually wear red jackets. The Irish poet Yeats had an explanation for this. According to him, the solitary fairies like the leprechaun traditionally wore red while the fairies who lived in groups wore green. So it was a color delineation. If, if they wore green, you could expect to see four, five, 12 of them. But you see a red clothing on a, on a fairy, you know they, they were solitary. Yeah, he was nomad status. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, the leprechaun's jacket had seven rows of buttons. Each row, in turn, had seven buttons. In certain parts of the country, the leprechaun wore a tricorn hat or a cocked hat. The outfit also varied depending on the region the myth was from. Now, the northern leprechauns were dressed in military coats, and the leprechauns from the west coast were in warm frise jackets. Now, the Tipperary leprechaun appears in an antique slash jacket while the leprechauns in Monahagen were wore a swallow-tailed evening coat, but they were all usually red. So that's interesting to me, how the their clothing changed depending on where they were from. And that makes sense to me. Yeah. If you've got different climates in different areas, different dress, even the fae of that realm are going to pick up that dress. Now, like I said, the later interpretations uh, of the leprechauns that wear green may be because green was a traditional national color of Ireland from as early as the 1600s. Mm -hmm. So the dress style of the leprechaun also changed to reflect the fashion of Irish immigrants coming to the United States. So in tales and portrayals where the leprechaun is making shoes, he might also be depicted wearing a leather apron over his clothes. So I think we've all probably seen that in some mm -hmm. drawings. You've got the leprechaun, but he's wearing a, a leather apron. Now, traditional tales of leprechauns talk of stern, gloomy, bad-tempered old men. Kind of like you, Matt. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but And I like shoes. Yeah, and there you go. There you go. <laughs> when you start making them and your beard turns red, that's, that's when I'll right. know something's up. Now, they are said to be frequently quarrelsome and foul-mouthed, and their purpose is to test human beings on their greediness, like I mentioned a minute ago. They are also often associated with craftsmanship. 
So kind of a different take, you know, not mm-hmm. the one we think about. But the more modern interpretation of a leprechaun is not authentic to Irish folk tales. It, it, that's a more universal European image that appeared due to the influence of fairy tales from the continent. Now, this version of the leprechaun seems to enjoy playing practical jokes on humans. While never as dangerous or malicious as some of the Irish fae, these leprechauns are only interested in making mischief for the sake of it. Yeah, they're just having fun. Right. They're just out to trick you and pick on you and stuff like that. So D.R. McAnally, who wrote Irish Wonders in 1888, says that the interpretation of the leprechaun as professional cobblers is a false one. The, the fact is that the leprechaun only mends his own shoes very often since he runs about so much and wears them out. Okay. So, again, a different take. But one interesting fact about leprechauns is that they are exclusively male. Irish folklore always depicts these creatures as bearded elves. If there are no women, where do the baby leprechauns come from, you might ask? Well, there is no answer to this question. So there, are, there aren't any accounts of female leprechauns in history. Huh. So that, that kind of adds to their um, mythical, magical nature. You know, where do they come from? Do they just spring from a toadstool or from maybe a cobbler's sweepings or something? Up, up pops a leprechaun. Yeah, it makes me kind of wonder if, like with, um, like, uh, incubi and succubi. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, you know, if, if, if this, if this particular, you know, entity is an incubus, it's male. Um, if it's a succubus, it's female. So yeah. if if leprechauns are always male, it it kind of makes me wonder: is there a female fae that would be a trickster, prankster, um, but not a leprechaun? You right. know, not portrayed that way. I, I figure we would have probably come across that in the research, but not necessarily because, as Adam said at the top of the show, there's so much. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much. I mean, you're, we're talking about a really broad topic here, um, but it, it's it's interesting to consider. Uh, you know, maybe maybe they're not female leprechauns; they're female something else, and there mm-hmm. are no males of that type. Right, or it could be if we're broadly speculating here, it could be like dwarves. They say that all dwarves have beards, male and female, have big bushy beards. And you can't, if you're not a dwarf, you can't tell the difference between a male and female dwarf. You know, I think they said that in Lord of the Rings too. I think they mentioned, Uh, maybe. I think he said, even the females have beards or something along those lines. Um, So maybe what we think are all male leprechauns are actually female too. They just have red beards and wear the top hats, too. Now, let's look at the evolution a little bit more of the leprechaun. And I'll, I'll touch on a couple of the things that I touched on a minute ago, too. But it says, while traces of the leprechaun legend date back to the 8th century, the character as we know it today is likely a, con- a conflation of two figures from Irish mythology. The Lucorpon and the Chloricon. Over the centuries, elements associated with each of these enchanting creatures have mixed and mingled to conjure up the concept of the leprechaun. So the Lucorpon, the earliest recorded use of the term, is found in The Death of Fergus Mac Latee, an 8th century story about tiny water spirits. So the Lucorpon who tricks a king into giving up his throne after attempting to drag him into the sea and granting him three wishes. So we got a water trickster spirit there. Now the Chloricon is a solitary household fairy. Legend has it that the Chloricon haunts wine cellars, uh, a move motivated by the small sprite's love of drinking. And like the leprechaun, revels in tomfoolery and trickery, this says. Now, 
They traditionally dress in green, which is likely where the leprechaun's signature color scheme came from. In fact, until the 20th century, like I said, leprechauns were customarily clad in red. So it was not until the 20th century that that changed. It says, quote, but he is quite the bow in his dress, dress notwithstanding, for he wears a red square cut coat richly laced with gold and inexpressible of the same, cocked hat, shoes, and buckles. And that was written by Samuel Lover in Legends and Stories of Ireland, an anthology published in 1831. Yeah. So here's a cool idea. If if anybody that has any kind of uh, influence, um, I, I think based on this, the Celtics ought to like have some alternate uh, red uniforms. Oh, yeah. Just flip everybody out. We're like, what? Why are the Celtics wearing red? What the hell's going on? And then you look it up. we like, hey, yeah, traditionally, we all wore yeah. red. They you know, could that'd go be old cool. school, quote, old school jerseys old and school, be red. Yeah. yeah. I think that'd be, that'd be a cool thing based just based on this. That'd be a mm-hmm. neat, neat thing. Now, this next bit comes from my modern net that I found, and I thought it was interesting. It says, today, the legend of the leprechaun has taken on a life of its own. In addition to elements borrowed from the leprechaun and the chloricon, the modern leprechaun has come to be associated with other attributes, namely a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Now, while the origin of this trope isn't crystal clear, a popular explanation is that the leprechauns would use their elusive treasure as a means to trick passersby and barter with their captors. Now, leprechauns are seen throughout American culture where they are the faces of breakfast cereals, Lucky Charms, like we said, as well as mascots or basketball teams, the University of Notre Dame, and like Matt said, the Boston Celtics. Now, our perception of the enchanted creatures has changed over the years, culminating in the, quote, toadstool sitter with red Galway beers and green hats that we associate with one particularly magic holiday, St. Patrick's Day. So let's look at St. Patrick's Day and the Leprechaun. So Leprechauns are associated with St. Patrick's Day, this says, but because it's because they both trace their history to Ireland. St. Patrick's Day is on March 17th to commemorate the day St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, died. There is no direct connection between St. Patrick and the Leprechaun apart from that they are both symbols of Ireland. Most people associate St. Patrick's Day with good deeds, drinking beer, making new friends, and participating in parades and festivals. People wear green to resemble leprechauns. Modern culture has conjured leprechauns on St. Patrick's Day, and it's unlikely that the relationship will end soon, this says. So, real quick before Matt takes over, let's quickly go back over the traditions and beliefs surrounding leprechauns, since... I ran through that and kind of was jumbled up in a bunch of history. So the pot of gold. One key component of the leprechaun story is their famous pot of gold. They're known to possess and hoard their prized pots and traditionally hide this treasure at the end of a rainbow. That means that humans need to catch them in order to find this fortune, as it is impossible to actually locate the end of a rainbow. Now, lucky symbols. The leprechaun story says capturing these small creatures will secure a little bit of luck in addition to three wishes. With this in mind, they have become associated with the luck of the Irish, which is one of the reasons they remain so popular today. And I didn't find this, but it probably also has something to do with the green four-leaf clover being a, a, a symbol of luck which I actually have one on each wrist. If y'all didn't know that, I've got to, so I don't have to wear green for St. Patrick's Day. I've always got my four-leaf clovers on me. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I never thought about that. but That's not why I did it. But, you know. <laughs> I was like, where the hell did you grow up? It was like pinching everybody. You know, he's yeah. like, I, I'm going to fix this. Yeah, you know, right. Once and for all. I am so tired of getting pinched. <laughs> now, it was, uh, I was having a string of bad luck and I, I thought, eh, why not? And I got the four-leaf clovers on my wrist. It didn't help, but now I've got clovers on my wrist. So There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 
Another one, one of the attributes is the tiny tricksters. Now, many looking for fortune, this says, also seek to gain their gold. But beware, these little men are also known to be tricksters. They are said to deceive humans and serve as a warning against greed. Some even believe that they hide their gold simply in order to lure in the unsuspecting, and when granting their captors three wishes, they often instead lead them astray. All right, so let's talk about this week's sponsor, Fume. Now, cold turkey is great on sandwiches. Love a cold turkey sandwich with some mayo and some cheese, but cold turkey sucks when you're trying to break habits. And there's better ways to break your habit. And I'm not talking about, you know, some voodoo or hypnosis or anything like that. I'm talking about our sponsor, Fume. Fume looks at the problem in a different way. You know, not everything about a bad habit is wrong. So you don't want some drastic, uncomfortable change when you don't need it. You just need to remove the bad from your habit. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. So you get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit that you're free to enjoy and it replaces your bad habit and makes it easy. It comes with an adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting and it gives your fingers stuff to do which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while you're breaking your habit. And I know for me, a lot of the habit is what do I do with my hands? I need to be doing something with my hands. So if I get that urge, I can pull out the fume and I can breathe through it and it gives me that sensation. Or if I just need to fidget with something, it's clicky, it's tactile, and it looks good. So let's talk about a couple things with the fume. Now, when I tasted it, I was shocked at how good their flavors are. And it's got a nice weight to it. It's perfectly balanced. So it feels good in your hand when you're using it. And like I said, it looks good. It's made of real wood and it it looks classy to me. So you feel good using it. So if stopping is something that you've been putting off because it's hard, well, switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories and there's no reason that can't be you. So join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com, that's T-R-Y-F-U-M.com, and use our code TALES, T-A-L-E-S, to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfume.com, and use our code TALES, T-A-L-E-S, to get an additional 10% off your order today. Now, says one of the things, sights and sounds, is keep your ears open. They can often be heard tapping their tiny cobbler hammers in the distance, which signals listeners that they are near. They can also be heard dancing away to traditional Irish music and are even known to play instruments while doing a little jig. And a little tidbit I found, Matt. I thought this was interesting. There is a National Leprechaun Museum in Dublin. Yeah. Yeah, how I, cool is that? I want to go see. I, I want to go to Ireland, though. That That's one of the places I really want to go. But I think it would be cool while there to see the Leprechaun Museum. Yeah, and I've got, I've got another tidbit about... Um, uh, how, uh, how leprechauns are viewed. Um, but I'll, I'll bring that up a little bit later. So I've, I've got a pretty cool tidbit about them too. But like I said, you know, we're, I think the, the characterization of leprechauns has kind of led to the belief that these were just, you know, they were made up, you know, they were just, you know, stories and fables and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, 
artwork and whatnot has led to the, you know, the things like the Lucky Charms or, you know, the the Notre Dame uh, leprechaun that's out there on the sidelines, which interesting. I, I saw a thing earlier this year. Uh, this is the first year in Notre Dame history that the leprechaun is a female. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you think about it, they've been doing this for a really long time, and, and they've actually got a female student that is portraying the leprechaun this year, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. Now, she still looks like the traditional leprechaun. She's not dressed like a female leprechaun. She's just in that traditional garb, but nonetheless. Well, that's because, as we know, there are no There's no female, female leprechauns. leprechauns. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> it makes you wonder, though, doesn't it? You know, it's like. Well, we can't we can't have a female student be the leprechaun because there were no female leprechauns. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Probably not why they did that, but yeah. you know. Go go to Spirit Halloween. You'll find some female leprechauns. Mm-hmm. And if you can convince your uh significant other to wear that female leprechaun outfit, yeah, they'd uh you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> say all of that to say despite the idea now that this these are just characters from from fairy tales there have actually been sightings that are attributed to leprechauns but one thing you've got to know is you know we've talked about what they traditionally look like and what they traditionally wore that may not be accurate you know, as far as, you know, what what was thought of about leprechauns in the 8th century. Um, you know, they they have much more of a goblin quality. And, and if you want to see what I'm talking about, Google angry leprechaun. Okay? And, yeah. and look at the images. And these things look less like a little withered old man and more like a goblin. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. were, plus, you know, what do we know about goblins? They're tricksters, they're pranksters, you know, they, uh, you know, they, they, they hide things, they collect treasures and they cause mischief. Um, you know, you get a goblin in your home, it's going to cause you a lot of problems. So even in the, in the myth of goblins and leprechauns, they're not that different. And so a lot of these sightings, what is seen has a goblin-like appearance, but it has been attributed to leprechauns. Interestingly enough, none of these sightings take place in Ireland. Hmm. Okay. So there, there was a sighting uh, that occurred in South America. Several young boys were out one night playing soccer in the in the village streets. Okay, and this is a modern village. I mean, so there's street lights, and you know they're kicking the ball around playing. And in the video, uh, you notice one, one of them is filming. The ball gets kicked over towards an opposite street corner. And, I mean, it's well lit. It's right under a street light. But in the video, you see the ball bounce past. And then all of a sudden, this little small creature about three to four feet tall appears. And it looks like it's wearing a cloak and a hood. Hmm. And it's running down a side street. Now. When they see this, the the boys give chase, and as it reaches the edge where there's a little bit of a of a hedge row, um, it du- it ducks into the hedges, and the the boys follow after it, but they can't they don't see it anywhere. It it just disappeared. Yeah, and when you see it, you you un- you understand. Okay, this is not an animal. You know, it, animals don't wear clothes when. You know, unless, you know, you're, you're with Amanda and she's going to try to get, yeah. <laughs> to get you. She's tried to put more outfits on our dogs than I was like, they actually just, they hate this. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just bought Henry some, uh, plaid PJs and he begrudgingly wears them. He does not <laughs> like them, but you know, it's got the, the back legs too. Mm-hmm. And I think he feels self conscious because I I make fun of fun of him for having a buttless PJ. <laughs> you know, he's got like the butt flap thing. They look like chaps, mm-hmm. <laughs> plaid chaps. Exactly. 
But you do. You see the you see the cloak. It's obviously running on two legs, and it's quite fast. Um, but at, at, at three to four feet tall, this is not you know a, a, a miniature. You know, it's I mean, it, it's about the size of a, of a small child. Mm-hmm. Now, there's an, another video, and this one, the image is not as clear uh, of the creature in this video. Um, but the reaction of of the people around it that it, it really sells it it really you know that this this was something so um this video shows a group of friends that are out hiking and camping and they're out sitting around their campsite during the day okay it's broad daylight suddenly a small figure appears on the top of their camper hmm. and once they see it the creature moves swiftly and jumps off the back of the RV. And of course they chase after it and catch a final glimpse of the creature as it goes into the trees. Now the hikers would later describe the creature as wearing clothes that seem to be made from shiny leaves. So, you know, just more of a, more of a garment that we would think of, of when we think of what the fae would wear right you know right. something that looks like it was you know d- designed by nature yeah not like uh shorts and knee-high socks and a green coat yeah you know like uh you know a hollister hoodie and birkenstocks no yeah. you know not quite yeah. that's that's just a really hip kid you know um but you see it. I mean, and it and it's it moves remarkably fast. But it obviously did not. It didn't mind getting that close to people. And mm-hmm. when you look at it, it doesn't tell you exactly where this video was. But it it looked like it was somewhere, you know, in the U.S. or Canada or you know somewhere similar. Um, because they're they're out in a forest. You know, it's just. And that that style camper and and just the appearance they, you know, it looked like they were in North America, um, so it wasn't a monkey. I mean, the only way it would be a monkey right. if somebody's pet monkey got loose, but it certainly doesn't right. move like that. And yeah, it's it, but it does have this little odd goblin like appearance. And I've hmm. got I've got li- the I have the links in the show notes. You can go and see these videos. Now, most people immediately think of Ireland when you say leprechaun. I mean, it's the first thing pops into my head, but there was one homeowner who caught a goblin-like creature in a tree in his backyard in Miami, Florida. Hmm. Okay. Again, well, you know, maybe they were on vacation. Right. Um, Retired. So, so the homeowner in the video, he is filming... He, around his house in his backyard this is a new home to him and he is just filming and, and talking about the uh the different aspects of his yard and the things and and you see a very large tree in the yard now the homeowner didn't notice anything in the tree at first but later his cousin noticed this strange orange clad figure jumping around in the branches Weird. and it's obviously orange. It's really hard to tell if it's something that's colored orange or something. It is wearing something orange, but it doesn't move like a cat or yeah. anything else that you would think. I just might happen to look up in, in the tree and spy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's not a bird of any type. And, you know, I, it doesn't really look like a monkey. It's not a cat. Um, and it moves around with purpose. Okay. But it doesn't end there. Now, whether it's a leprechaun or a goblin or whatever, um, you can see it move. And the news actually came out and interviewed the homeowner. And in the interview, the homeowner explains that he had a small glass ornament that depicted a leprechaun-like imp. After the sighting, 
he says that he found that ornament shattered. And since that day, he has heard disconcerting noises coming from his garden and reverberating through his home. That's weird. So, and, it, and again, he didn't, he didn't stop. He called in a paranormal investigator. Hmm. And she speculated that somehow the tree had been transformed into a portal allowing for creatures from another dimension to pass through. That may be a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Okay. But this is what she said. But I liked what she recommended for this homeowner to do. She recommended leaving offerings of fresh fruit at the base of the tree. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, you, you can't catch it. You can't make it go away. It's causing you a little bit of worry because it's making noise. Try to make friends with it. Yep. You know, and and wh- we've heard that so often with the Fae. That's right. A- appease it. Yeah. Don't don't try to fight it, catch it, appease it. Yeah. If you want your flower garden to to really bloom and 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 look beautiful, then have an area for the Fae. Mm-hmm. You know, put fresh offerings out there like fresh fruit and and fresh water and those things to not only attract the fae, but to please them and they will help your garden grow and be beautiful. Um, That's why you see the the garden gnomes, the little statues. It's why you see the toadstools, you know, as garden decorations is that's all a carryover from fae legends. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, this one, <laughs> this one is from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Again, not leprechaun country, at least not that I thought. Right. But this video, th- this, is, this is the one to watch, okay? So in this video from Santa Fe, a mother is filming her toddler son playing on the tile of a rustic kitchen. Now, as you watch this little boy playing, a figure appears in a doorway behind him. Now, the figure doesn't look like it's more than a foot tall, okay? And it runs from the doorway across the floor and behind a cabinet. And this creature absolutely appears humanoid, two arms and two legs, and it runs with a distinct human-looking pattern, Mm. okay? The mother claims that the little creature is real and routinely interacts with her son, and faint whispers and laughter can be heard in the home as the boy seems to converse with the figure who typically remains out of sight. The mother says she knows the being is real because whenever these interactions occur, the creature leaves behind a very distinct scent. And I'm like you, you watch this look. The... I am always a skeptic on these on these videos, okay? Because I know that you know with with AI, with with people that are really really good at at uh, video and photo editing, you can make anything seem possible. The sure. the cool thing about this is this thing runs like I said, like a like a human from one door and it darts behind a cabinet. It runs through the open. It's not dark. Okay, you see it. And the interesting thing is the way it runs on its right side or what would be its right side. It it looks like there's a window or like a glass door. Yeah. And sunlight is coming in and you see the delineation from the cabinet. The little the little child is in the floor and you see this thing run through the sunlight and it casts a shadow and it it casts a shadow that looks perfect. I mean, and I don't mean perfect, like a little too perfect. I mean, it looks like what you would expect the shadow to be. Because when yeah. I watched it several times, I was like, let me see if this thing is, yeah, it's got a shadow. And, That's interesting. And yeah, I mean, it and, it, and it's not anything mechanical. Okay. So if it's a hoax, it was, it was, it, it was done very well and it was put in there. It, mm-hmm. it wasn't like we're going to film this and we've built this little thing. To make it run, because you see the baby in the photo too, in the, in the video too, and it's moving and reacting to this thing. Yeah. So, um, 
it's it's not it's hard to make a baby do anything you want it to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and this yeah. thing if obviously reacts to that, something. If you were filming that and faking it, that's the time <laughs> that the baby would not, or it'd pick it up and yeah, slam the toy down or something. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 really cool. Now, I'm not saying this is 100 percent proof that there's leprechauns, but um. I don't know what it's that thing is. Though. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really interesting. And again, you can check out those videos in the link uh, in the show notes. Now, this last sighting we're going to talk about, this is uh, from Mobile, Alabama. And this one actually got some, some it, it actually had some traction, okay? Hmm. It was picked up by the news, and, and, it's, and it's kind of been taken by the- I think I remember the, this one. Yeah, yeah. This is the uh, now. I think this is Crichton. Um, yep, yep, yeah, yeah, the, the one the, I remember. The Crichton Leprechaun. Yep. Um, it's also known as the Mobile Leprechaun or the Alabama Leprechaun, and it's the supposed sighting of a leprechaun in a tree in Crichton, uh, which is a neighborhood uh, of Mobile, Alabama. Now, this after a 2006 news report. Um, Filed at the local NBC affiliate, WPMI-TV, the video was posted to YouTube on St. Patrick's Day uh, 2006 and became one of the first YouTube viral videos and was referenced in mainstream media. As of 2018, the video had over 28 million views. Wow. Now, this is what WPMI-TV reported. It says the video was shot in the Mobile neighborhood of Crichton, located near uh, Tulmanville. The community is divided by Spring Hill Avenue into North Crichton and South Crichton, uh, bounded generally by Mobile Street, Dolphin Street, and Interstate 65. The leprechaun was purported to be seen in a tree on Lacrin Street near Bayshore Avenue. So, I mean, that is just that is a news report. That says the leprechaun was reportedly mm-hmm. seen in a tree. Um, I mean, it's 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 neat. I mean, you know, but I don't know that any of these other ones got this kind of this kind of attention. No. It says on March fourteenth, two thousand six, the uh, WPMI TV was alerted to crowds gathering in Crichton and dispatched reporter Brian Johnson to investigate. Johnson had previously received numerous calls about a possible leprechaun sighting and questions about it from friends at a barbershop and at his church. It says, uh, quote, things sort of snowballed when the crew arrived. Anchor Scott Walker later recalled with multiple people claiming to have seen a leprechaun in a tree. Crichton resident Nina Thomas Brown submitted a crudely drawn sketch of the supposed leprechaun. And that is about as crude a drawn sketch yeah, as you man. can imagine. <laughs> yeah, that, that it's, just, oh. it's like the way I draw faces. <laughs> yes. Now, among those who were interviewed was a woman who opined that instead of a leprechaun, she says it could have been a crackhead. <laughs> well, it could have been. <laughs> could have been a crackhead. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna start saying that now. When when Michael says anything, I'm, I'll be like, "Well, you know, could have been a crackhead." That's right. No, I saw this. Well, it could have been a crackhead. <laughs> have you thought about a crackhead? Yeah. Could it have been a crackhead? <laughs> it's not an owl. It's a crackhead. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Always a crackhead. <laughs> oh, goodness. But uh, a- another interviewee, uh, DeMarco Morissette, claimed he claimed Irish ancestry and showed off a, quote, special leprechaun flute that he claimed was I, thousands of years old. I don't think you can show your leprechaun flute on TV. <laughs> I, just saying. But if I you think, do, uh, that'll definitely get you on the news. Yeah, it will. <laughs> but Morissette became known as the Flute Man due to his appearance in the report. Now, to me, the Flute Man is Greg Warren. You know, so <laughs> if anybody knows what I'm talking about, yeah, then you know. Um, I actually saw, it says, quote, I actually saw what was sketched on paper, said Johnson at the time. That was the Brian Johnson, who was the uh, reporter dispatched. 
He said, some people say it is a shadow from some of the branches being too close and that there is moss on the tree that could explain it. He said, certainly, I don't believe it's a leprechaun. I don't believe it's moss and tree branches either. You know, tell me it's a cat. You know, tell me it's a bird. Tell me something. But don't tell me it's just moss in a tree. Lord. Yeah. The piece aired twice, once on the nightly newscast and again on uh, WPMI's morning uh, newscast. Um, it was that version of it that uh, was Scott Walker and Nicole Patrick. That was the video that went viral. Now, here's the, here's the funny part. The Bob that and... It wasn't funny before. It wasn't then? funny before. It's <laughs> funny now. No, it's hilarious now. <laughs> the Bob and Dan show on KTCK 1310, the ticket in Dallas, conducted a field investigation in 2014, interviewing locals about their memories of the incident. Numerous witnesses identified the Crichton leprechaun as a local townsperson named Sean, who was a dwarf. The interviewers were brought to meet the man who recounted the story as a prank played on the local community in which he dressed in a leprechaun suit and climbed a tree while his friends alerted others about leprechaun sightings. Oh, good grief. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this guy, the, the, now I understand I don't believe this at all. Okay. No. Um, but I think it's hilarious. Um that these guys from Dallas went down there, you know, with the uh, the idea that they were going to go down and and do this uh, get a good story leprechaun hunt and 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 talk mm-hmm. to these witnesses and then learn that no, it was a guy that named Sean. He's a dwarf, and you know we we dressed him up and he climbed up in the tree. Yeah, I think some somebody would have figured that out, but that is so funny. <laughs> you well, think how about many somebody these- actually doing that? Yeah, how many of these major sightings have we seen where somebody comes along later and takes tries to take credit for it, as in the hoax? Yeah. You know, they tried to do that with the Patterson-Gimlin film. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And uh, to me, the Patterson-Gimlin one has been disproven yep. because of the technology they had at the time, but I think it would be easy to debunk whether that was sean or not just get him to do it again yeah that's right come on where's your where's your outfit do it again Mm -hmm. now jump from the tree run as quick as you did before and if he can't do it maybe it wasn't sean yeah yeah maybe not but i i took this as this was uh this was two morning djs yeah on a morning show in dallas you know Mm -hmm. so you know, any anything like this, it, it come it it's just right up their alley. You know, oh, you sure. know, any yeah. morning show that you listen to, they've always got like, you know, the wacky weekday morning show, and you know, it's mm-hmm. everything is just about being as wild or ridiculous as they can. So we got a, a morning show here. It's a, a country a station, but I actually like. His brand, it's Hawkeye, if you're from the area. He does hoaxes on the the town, and they're actually pretty good. You remember the the um monoliths or whatever that showed up mm-hmm. around the all right, during that time, he did one. He had a <laughs> school group make one, and then he just went and put it out in the middle of somewhere at like this public area. And the authorities investigated and all that, and they found out, you know, that it was fake. And they were talking about prosecuting who did it and oh, all that God. stuff. And he had to go talk to him and get him to stop, you know, look, it was a joke, guys, you know, and right. then he revealed it on whatever. So now anytime any big thing happens, the whole show is like, was that you? Hawk, <laughs> did you do that? You know, because <laughs> he's always doing these like elaborate hoaxes and it, they're hilarious oh that's great that's great but prosecute people don't just can't nobody can have fun anymore like no. that i mean you just no, you can't. can't you know no. i think that, that that's hysterical you know it yeah. didn't hurt anybody 
Well, and everybody thought it was hysterical except for the couple lawmakers yeah. that thought they needed to prosecute him for it. Yeah. Now, of course, you know, as Adam, you know, as Adam said in the history, you know, these tales of leprechauns go back hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, in Ireland, that is that is where that, that is where the leprechauns are. You know, if if you're going to if you talk to people, you know, they're like, if you want to find a leprechaun, go to Ireland. You know, that's what you need to do. But this happened back in 1989, and this happened in Carlingford County, Louth. Louth. How do I say that? You said it earlier, didn't you? I don't know. I, I've probably butchered it, and I apologize. But anyway. Um, I don't think I said that word. <laughs> there, there was a pub uh, owner named PJ O'Hare. What a great name for a, a guy that owns an Irish pub. Mm-hmm. Um, which if you're in Ireland, it's just a pub. Um, but anyway, yeah. uh, you wouldn't go to, he wouldn't go to Ireland. I'm going to go to an Irish pub. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, uh, but, but O'Hare was walking across a plot of land when he says he heard a small stifled scream come from a well that was on the land. Oh, geez. He went to investigate and found the skeletal remains of a leprechaun as well as his tiny little leprechaun clothing beside the well. The skeletal remains of the leprechaun quickly fell into dust just minutes after he found them, but he ended up putting the items of clothing on display in his pub, which attracted sightseers from around the world. Hmm. So if you if you if you can find uh, uh, PJ O'Hare's uh, pub, you know which may may still be there, he had a little leprechaun outfit that he claimed to find by a well on display. That's cool. That is kind of cool. I like that story, even if you know it, he he got his mother in law to sew a little leprechaun outfit or something. But mm-hmm. I mean, I imagine some somebody wanted to take a closer look at it and. But again, you know, even if that's not true, that's a lot of fun. Um, well, and, and I and can get behind thing. that. Yeah, I just, I just looked it up. Now, for those of you that hasn't seen it, it's green pants, a green jacket, and what you would associate with like a green Santa hat. Oh yeah, like okay. a small little pointy. Uh, like Santa hat thing. It doesn't fall to the side, but it sticks straight up pointy thing. And it's this older gentleman holding it. And I mean, it looks like an infant's size. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting. (laughs) And he's got it in a case and it's, it's just, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's like you said, it's probably not true, but, interesting nonetheless and it, it i'm sure it brought him a lot of a lot of money oh yeah oh yeah people just want to come and see it and have a pint i was gonna say once you're there i mean you gotta have a drink now here's my little tidbit so thanks to major lobbying groups uh that came about because of you know, PJ O'Hare finding the little outfit and the celebration of leprechauns in Carlingford. Um, leprechauns have officially been protected since 2009 in a European directive. I think that's cool. Yeah. The European directive aims to preserve an area in Louth called the, <laughs> the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's the, 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 the slob, Foy Loop, and I know I'm mispronouncing that word, um, but it is protected for the flora, the fauna, and leprechauns. That's cool. Now, this is really interesting. The lobbyists believe that there are only 236 leprechauns still living in Ireland and that they are all concentrated in that area in Louth, which is also considered to be an important part of the spirit world. Hmm. I don't know where they get that number from. 
I mean, I, I looked. I, the 236, you'll find it, you know, in other references to leprechauns, but I don't see any. I haven't found anything that says this is why they think there's 236. I mean, it's not like they were out there taking a census, you right. know. Right. Hey, there's a little door in that tree over there, and they go, uh, hello, how many leprechauns yep. living in this tree? You know, it, yep. I mean, I don't know, but, you know, 236 is the magic number, apparently. Hey, hey why not? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, it's not as many as I thought there'd be. Right, yeah, exactly. So, as a, as a little Graveyard Tales um, public service announcement, uh, we're gonna we're gonna let you know what should you do if you happen to come across a leprechaun. So you're like PJ hey. O'Hare. You're out walking in the green pasture, and you you come across a well, and lo and behold, there's a leprechaun there. Pee, scream, and run. <laughs> right, and not necessarily in that order. And, right, and, no, and, I mean, and maybe all at one time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can run and pee at the same time. It, it's it's possible. Not comfortable, That's but right. possible. <laughs> now, understand that no leprechaun willingly gives up his pot of gold. But if you come across one, you may be in luck. If you can keep your wits, you may learn the location of his secret hoard and become rich. But if you fail, be warned, the leprechaun may well have his revenge. Uh oh. So first you gotta find one. So wander around the countryside in Ireland for the best results. It helps to be alone for some reason, but no matter what, don't expect to find a leprechaun. It is when you are least expecting it that you will stumble upon one. So go out looking for a leprechaun, but don't but don't. Yeah. yeah. Go out looking and then go, there's no way in hell I'm finding a leprechaun. Yeah, right. You know. but so- <laughs> go out looking, but not looking for leprechauns. Just like go looking for stuff. Yeah. I'm just looking. It's like, I'm like looking when for I walk sky. into a store. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just looking. I'm just, yep. Just window shopping. Then it says, choose your approach. Extortion is the traditional method for the, <laughs> for the hands-on technique. Catch him by the neck and give him a little squeeze. You know, Homer Simpson style, as Adam said. Yep. But whatever you do, don't look away. Because the moment you take your eyes off of him, the leprechaun will disappear. And it says, once you have him in your grasp, you are in a position to have a polite or not so polite conversation. Start off by asking where he keeps his crock or pot of gold. Don't be surprised when he doesn't tell you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But instead, he will use cunning tricks to try to escape. Also, don't be fooled if he tells you it's over there and points. <laughs> so this is that's a common leprechaun trick. Okay, that's mm-hmm. where you know mm-hmm. what is that? You know, look a squirrel. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you look, he's gone. Okay. Now, this may include your house or any other local building that may or may not be on fire, uh, a boat full of good-looking men or women, or even one or more attackers who are coming to cut you from behind. So whatever they say, don't look away. Now, if the leprechaun is not forthcoming after you shake him up a bit and you ask him a second time, you may have to take him home. So you, you boil a kettle and threaten to plunge him into the hot water. Mm. Now, you may have to do this a few times, it says. You may also... Threaten him or boil him a few times. Maybe both, you know. Okay. Um, But it says you may also have to tie him to a table leg or imprison him in a chest. If you do, have patience. It may take a year and a day of imprisonment before he tells you anything because oh, leprechauns are notoriously stubborn. So I got to keep this this little angry man mm-hmm. in a chest in my house. But I got to look at him the whole time. Maybe. Like if I throw him in a chest, do I have to keep an eye on the chest? I don't know. It didn't say. Or, it didn't specify. Okay. But I'd imagine he's not going to be quiet. 
No. You know, so you're going to have to get a soundproof chest or something. Or just don't have anybody over for a year. Or That's right. Yeah. Keep him. And just explain. I'm trying to get a pot of gold. Y'all shut up. <laughs> Keep I mean, him in a rental house. Okay. Yeah. You know, so you don't have to live with him. Now, even if he does divulge the location of his gold, do not trust a leprechaun to give you the correct location. You may discover that he has given you the location of something far less desirable, like a chest containing a leprechaun skeleton, or worse. Your best bet is to bring him with you. One tried and true method is to trap the leprechaun in your apron pocket. So now I've got to go find an apron. Yeah, right. And and with a pocket. And a secure pocket. Because I imagine yeah. if you just drop him in there, he's not he's not gonna stick He'll around. Just jump out. Yeah. I I've been thinking this whole time that I, I need to hog tie him <laughs> and put a leash on <laughs> That's him. That's right. Put him put him on like the like when the w- w- in in the cartoons when like the the uh the savages would, would capture Bugs Bunny or something and they'd have him hanging, you know, like a pig on a stick, you know, and they're they're mm-hmm. walking him, carrying to him. <laughs> yep. That's why you got to carry him. But you can use like a, a Q-tip or something and tie him to that and yeah. you can carry him around. Um, but it, Use a walking cane. <laughs> beat him with his shillelagh. <laughs> it says if you do find the gold, be prepared to dig it up immediately. Even if you mark the location, you will not find the gold again if you have to run home for a shovel. Okay, so now it's say. Time to a you shovel. You got to get the shovel. Yeah. And you got to have an apron. Yep. So I'm with Adam. Time to the shovel. Time to the shovel. You know? And you can keep an eye on him while you're digging the yeah, hole. Yeah. Throw the shovel up on your shoulder and have him dangling from it. Mm hmm. Now, should you fail as an extortionist or a burglar, um, be prepared to suffer ill fortune. You may have thought leprechauns were lucky, but many tales warn that those who encounter leprechauns will have bad luck. Mm. If you manage to build a business on leprechaun gold, your luck and your wealth may vanish. Even after shorter encounters, your livestock may sicken, your horse may die, and you may wake up to find yourself blind. Oh, great. And lastly, this says, good luck. You'll need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what I gather is just leave the thing that's alone. That's what I say. Though, if we go to all this extreme, and now we're going to say, it's probably just best just to let them be. You know? Yeah. You find the gold, and then you become wealthy. It may just up and vanish one day. Well, I don't want that. And and you'll end up blind with no cows. Yeah. So, I, it, it seems like too much work anyway. That's right. <laughs> I mean, keeping him in an apron, put him in a chest. And why would he direct you to a chest with leprechaun bones in it? Yeah, like, exactly. That's weird to me. Did somebody else try it and too hard headed? <laughs> and he's like, go next door, look in your neighbor's chest. And you do, and it's leprechaun bones. That's- and the guy's like, dad, gumming up. It's only been 363 days. I thought I was a <laughs> couple one, days from One it. day too early. Yeah. 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 Well, if you don't find a way to feed this thing, you know, then uh, you may wind up with the bones anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this, uh, we had a lot of fun um, looking up these legends about leprechauns. And I was shocked to have found all the videos and stories of the sightings. And there's more. Uh, these were just some of the coolest ones that I could find. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you know, it, it, it is. It is very, very interesting when you when you consider the fact that a, a lot of these legends had, you know, threads of truth in them. Right. So it really makes me wonder if if it if it's not a leprechaun per se, what was it? I mean, what were mm-hmm. these little things? I mean. You know, did somebody just sit around one day and just dream this all up in the, you know, 800 years ago and, you know, just start telling these kind of little tales and everything. And it just grew from there. That's possible. But even even myths and fables and tall tales and folklore, they have something they're based on. Yep. 
There's something. So I in there. I'm really curious as to what what it, what was it based on? What served as the uh, inspiration for these type tales? Um, yeah, to me, it you know it started out as it, I think it said in the eighth century or whatever there were tales of water dwelling trickster spirits. Mm-hmm. So what if that is the actual fae and then the legend of them being lucky and the way they dress and all this was built onto them out of that. There is a diminutive humanoid fae that plays tricks and everything kind of like goblins, like you said, but they live out in nature. And if you catch them, you're in trouble. But all this other stuff, the pot of gold, the tricorn hat or the top hat, all that was just added on as culture and dress change. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, really, really something to, to think about. If you're, if you're into this, if you, if you like to read about the Fae and all those things, look into leprechauns. I mean, it, it's way more interesting than you think on the surface. I mean, you're really mm-hmm. not going to be reading stories about, um, you know, a little leprechaun that's trying to uh, uh, protect his breakfast cereal. Right. Right. But let us know what you guys think. Um, do you think there might have been something like this that led to the legends of what we now consider to be leprechauns? Uh, or do you think this is all just completely made up? It was just good old fashioned Irish folklore. Let us know the, and the best place to do that is in our Facebook group. Um, thousands of people there. It's one of the most active groups out there and it's a lot of fun. It's safe. You can, you can come in there and, and talk about personal experiences or odd things or, or tell a joke. Um, and, and nobody's going to make fun of you. Nobody's going to pick at you, call you a loony. None of that. We just want to hear these really great stories. Yep. And then you can check out our website, which is graveyardpodcast.com. And on our website, you can find links to purchase Graveyard Tales merchandise. You can listen to the show and you can become a patron. And as we mentioned earlier, hey, a great idea for a Christmas gift. If you've got a graveyard member uh, on your list, um, you know, we we really su- appreciate the support and and we always take time to thank all of our patrons uh on every show. Man, I tell you what, this was <laughs> this was a long one, brother. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it's though. a lot of fun. Um so that's all I've got for leprechauns. Hey, be on our Christmas show is coming up. So if you mm-hmm. you submitted your stories, thank you so much. We're looking forward to uh, to recording that those shows. Until next time, we'll save you a seat in the graveyard. See you soon.